Hello everyone, uh, my name is Josh Create PT. Today I am with Faisana, who is a lead nutritionist uh, with us and she helps us with all things nutrition um, and understanding how we can benefit and help our learners improve so they can therefore help their clients going forward. Um, so I suppose first of all, what we'll talk about is how, how we met and, and what you do. So we met, what, 10 years ago now? Yeah, no, I think it's about nine and a bit, but yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah, nearing 10, 10 years. Man. Yeah, it's been insane. Yeah, absolutely. So we we met, you were a member of the gym that I was a personal trainer at and still do some PT at now. Um, and you were looking for a trainer, weren't you, at the time? I was. I'd just given birth. Um, I was in that kind of post phase of like you know i've just given birth i don't know what to do i don't know what exercises to do um i've just had an emergency cesarean i'm trying to heal so i came into the gym and then i saw you and we had a chat and then i said can we train and you went yeah we can train and i think within the first couple of weeks you had me lifting more than my body weight in um deadlifts yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it sort of continued from there yeah no i mean Obviously, for yourself, it was a traumatic experience with what you had to go through, which was horrible. And then I'm always around. And it was great that once you'd been given the all clear that you could do things, it was very apparent that if we could build your strength quite quickly, obviously you knew what to do from an eating standpoint, so we could just focus on pushing you that way, that you could see some real benefit functionally and also it will help with going forward, not just that immediate impact for you with Omar then, but now 10 years on being yeah yeah because I was 40 when I had my son and um because of my hormone hormonal status I knew I was perimenopausal before I gave birth before I had my before I got pregnant before any of these things I knew I was perimenopausal so I was in that stage where you know my hormones weren't where they should have been and when I had my son I kind of knew that I needed to hit the ground running and I needed to, you know, up my strength training and, you know, I wanted to be able to lift my son. You know, abdominal surgery is a big thing. They cut through many layers um, and healing can take time. So I'm not saying, you know, if there's anyone watching there that, I've, you, that might have had a cesarean that, you know, I need to just get up and start training. You need the all clear from your GP. But once you have that, you need to go back into the gym or in an environment where you can train and you can strengthen your body and, you know, increase muscle mass and, you know, just get stronger. 100%, absolutely. So obviously now, I mean, you're, before we even met, you were into naturopath and doing your nutrition stuff anyway, and you were working with clients. And your field has sort of changed slightly in the last few years since we've been together because of the people you're working with. And obviously with menopause and stuff now becoming such a, a hot topic and, and and it seems to be they're the people you're working with most now um along with alongside women who need help with nutrition and stuff for okay weight loss or whatever else it may be but the the stage of life that quite a lot of your clients are in now are perimenopausal or menopausal aren't they so i mean we had a look at the stats haven't we already in terms of menopause and stuff i mean you know more than i do but if you want to go through some bits with menopause no it's uh it's like one in three women at this moment in time in the united kingdom are either in a perimenopausal state or they are in the menopause and postmenopausal. It's crazy, isn't it? it is absolutely crazy because um the average age for a woman to go through the menopause is around 51 and if you think or if you go back 10 years, which is roughly around the time that a woman starts to experience perimenopausal symptoms, you're looking at early 40s. And I'm seeing more and more clients in their mid 30s um, experiencing, you know, what would be classed as PMS or PMT during their menstrual cycles, but it's something that's just going on. So when they're having um, a menstrual bleed, they're not then feeling that, oh, I feel calmer now, I feel better now, I'm less anxious. It's just continuing. So I'm actually seeing more and more women sort of in their mid to late 30s experiencing symptoms of the perimenopause than ever before. And when I first started to practice, you know, I would talk to women, we would go through lengthy questionnaires, we would talk about, you know, hormones in general. But I think now, in this day and age, I think with me, because I do a lot of functional testing with my with my ladies, it's really opened up a world where, you know, you might be saying something, your body's telling you something else. When you get the results from functional testing, 
you look at this piece of paper and you think, wow, you know, maybe I'm not I'm not stressed, I don't feel stressed, my life is quite perfect. And then you have your functional testing results and it's telling you that your cortisol levels are heightened and your long-term cortisol levels are, you know, really erratic and really high and there's inflammation going on in your body and you haven't ovulated and there's all these issues going on. So um, the perimenopause is a hot topic and more and more women are becoming aware of it, probably because... You've got people like Davina McCall who are, you know, having a menopause Monday or they have their own podcasts and they have their own programs. And she's done she's done so well because she's highlighted something that women for decades have been, you know, going through all of these symptoms. But they didn't know who to talk to. They didn't know who to tell. They just thought they were going mad because, you know, one of the many cognitive issues that women face when they're going through the perimenopause and the menopause is brain fog you know you sort of think do I have early onset Alzheimer's do I have a touch of dementia do I have ADHD what's going on with me and then you know you might go down the functional testing route and have a full profile done and then it all just becomes so much clearer so I think this conversation is really important absolutely so Obviously, a lot of information there. You speak about perimenopause and menopause and a third of female population having being in one stage or the other. What's the difference? So the, peri, the perimenopause is like a transitional phase that can start in a woman's um, early 40s, let's say. And it's just a time where estrogen levels are dipping and perhaps um, if the woman is having a, a menstrual cycle, she's not ovulating mid-cycle, so she's not producing that hit of natural progesterone. So she's experiencing heightened PMT. So sore breasts, um, anxiety, mood shifts, constipation, bloat, all the things that she was experiencing before, but it's just becoming a little bit more aggressive, let's say. And there may be months where she feels absolutely fine, and then there may be months where she's struggling to get up or she's sleeping so much or she's not sleeping when she should be sleeping. And she's just so anxious and she's developed like, um, you know, like a bit of a tummy. So it's not this thing that, you know, her clothes are no longer fitting her, but it's just a bit of a tight squeeze to get into her trousers or her jeans. So that's the perimenopause. And quite often it's classified as... Um, irregular menstrual cycles um, but I just need to let anyone know that is listening to this that it's not always all about menstrual cycles because there are women out there and I am a case in point I have throughout my menstruating life always had 28 day cycles yet when I had my testing done I was in a perimenopausal stage so, you know, it can, for many wi women, um, start with irregular menstrual cycles, but it's not always the case. Okay. And for the menopause, the menopause is classified as, so, um, as a point in time at which you've not had a menstrual cycle for 12 months. And that is the day that you would say, I've now gone through the menopause, and then the day after you are classified as post-menopausal. So there's actually three phases, perimenopause, that starts, say, in the early 40s, maybe late 30s, um, up to roughly 51, 52 for UK statistics. And then you have the menopause, where you've not had a menstrual cycle for 12 months, and then you are classified as post-menopausal, and that is the rest of your natural life, regardless if uh, you have HRT or bio-identical HRT or not.